Okay. Yeah, got it. Let me know. Online. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, let's go. Uh, very, very good morning, Your Highness. Um, I'm joined this morning by Her Royal Highness uh, Queen Nadia Hariri. We're also joined by Raj and to everybody else there who is uh, watching uh, at some point uh, in their lives, whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening. Uh, a great day to you. It's lovely to see you. Okay, um, just to hear a little bit about this morning's session and uh, how this may help. It's a little bit of an unusual subject for some people and for others, it's completely natural. Understanding and very, very psychological as much as it has an element of mystery to it. And the more that we actually think about the mystery, well, that's very much old hat now. There's very much an old language because more and more evidence is being brought into into the subject of our hands. And when we look at our hands, the lines in our hands, we'll see all the lines are in different places on everybody. And when we look at the psychology of this, it's absolutely fascinating how we can learn so much. Today, I'm not talking about uh, the uh, hands and the palms themselves. I'm actually looking at fingertips. And to introduce myself, my name is Phil Griggs. I work in psychotherapy. I work in hypnosis. I work in neuro language coaching. I also work in NLP and other trauma-based therapies. And with all this, I'm also a master palmist. And by this, I um, work with people's hands to find out many different roots or causes about particular issues which are going on in people's lives, um, such as a problem, how to overcome it, whether it be a relationship, whether it be professional, health, career, and um, areas which I may be able to help in. When we talk about health, I would always, always suggest that people contact a uh, um, um, GP or a doctor or a, a medical practitioner. Um, but in this case, we're not looking at this particular site. We're looking today at how we learn, how we learn, how we can use, how we can discover through our fingertips uh, the different ways we understand. The fingertips are our DNA to life. Our fingertips, our fingerprints, should I say, will never, ever change throughout our lives. They're always the same. What we learn through this here is it's our DNA to reacting to the world. No one is better than anybody else regarding fingerprints. We've all got relevant skills and just that some work in so better in one way and some work better in another. Um, also with this here, our way of learning doesn't mean to say that's um, uh, better or worse than someone else. Our methodology, our approach, our habits, our uh, psychology to learning is all individual. And this is uh, a, a brief look at this to skim across a surface, I guess, in some respects, because obviously I can't look at all your fingerprints at the moment to understand exactly how you learn. But if we take a majority of the uh, prints in your hands. Now, if you look closely at your fingerprints, you'll notice they have certain patterns. Sometimes it may be good to get a magnifying glass or a light or something like this where you can look. And before you know it, when you look at your fingerprints, you'll suddenly see that they're all, either they're all the same, some are different, or they're all different, <laughs> whichever way it is. So we're going to look at this today. And what we're going to look at is the most relevant print in your hand, what your fingers look like. So I'm going to share the screen now, talk about this. If you've got any questions as we go through, by means do. And, uh, but also this is a subject I'll probably go over again. I imagine we'll get through... Um, about half of this today and then next week I'll do the other half which uh, you may have you um, discovered that within a week <laughs> you've got about 30 40 questions <laughs> maybe maybe but let's let's go and share the screen and let's go and have a look right here we go we're going on to this now here we have uh, it says a palmistry special how we learn is at the tips of our fingers Educators, coaches, and mentors will be maybe very interested in this and uh, what our fingerprints, re our fingerprints reveal. Okay, hand reading or palmistry has become more credible, has become more scientific, uh, has more scientific backing now than ever before. Educational and learning skills are at the tips of our fingers. Hands are known as the fourth level of consciousness with the triumph of minds, heart, and guts. Um, 
Also, as an example, think of when you shake someone's hand and the immediate impression of each other that could be exchanged by this simple act. Now, isn't it interesting? When, you, um, when you're guided by things here, for instance, some people say, quick, go that way. They're pointing with that finger. Um, if they said, quick, go that way, people are going to say, whoa, well, what do you mean? Where are we going? It's interesting how we use our hands to display certain things. Now, we're going to look at this, look at this in a bit more detail as we go through there. Hands are our fourth consciousness. Now, scientists, psychologists, psychotherapists, um, coaches are all very, very aware of uh, the, the three consciousness between uh, the mind, the heart, and the gut. But think of how a garment feels. I'm going to shut my door so my dog doesn't keep coming in. <laughs> right. Right. Think of how a garment feels as soon as you touch it. Wow. Uh, this can also be a test of temperature by hand or even holding that special person's hand and experiencing a transfer of energy. Isn't it interesting? Ladies and gentlemen, you're both open to this. You walk into a clothes shop, yes, and you see a garment over the far side and you think, wow, whether gentlemen, it's a shirt or a suit, um, or for ladies, it could be a dress, a skirt or a blouse. And you see it over the distance there and you think it looks absolutely fantastic. That's one consciousness here, which is what you're seeing. The greatest consciousness, though, is not what it looks like. It's when you go up to it and how it feels. If it feels good, and it's not by quality, think, oh, that's cheaply made or that's expensive. No, it's how it feels. As soon as you touch something, isn't it interesting? That impression is going to make you go, I'm going to buy this. This is fantastic. I don't even want to look at the price tag. I'm just going to buy it. <laughs> This, that's what a lot of people I know do. And, uh, uh, me, I'm slightly different on that one. But anyway, but on the other side here, though, you may touch and go, oh, no, 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 that's not for me. Isn't it interesting how we can, how our fingertips relay straight to our gut and immediately we get a response on things, whether we like it, we don't like it, it's how it's going to lose. One aspect of our hands that will never change throughout our lives is our fingerprints. Our character DNA is recorded in our fingerprints and fingerprints provide the vital information which are often used for identification purposes in a criminal investigation. Medical profession both understands this and also they also look at this for detecting heart related conditions depending. I'm not going to go into which one's which because you'll be looking at, oh my goodness, am I going to keep going because I've got a certain pattern on your hand. No, <laughs> we're not going to go into that. But look, here's one already. You can see there, there's a fingerprint, and probably some of you are looking at your hands already and saying, hey, I've got one of them. I've got one of them. Imagine the possibilities educators could have if we understood how we learn. Imagine the possibilities. Imagine how amazing this could be. Education is in your fingertips. This article is a brief discussion of the relevance of analyzing fingerprints and the information or data encased in each fingertip. Dermatoglyphics, which is what it's called, holds the key to how we learn through education and explores our uniqueness, our essence, individuality, how we all learn and absorb knowledge using different modalities, strategies, and methodologies. Dermatoglyphics may help support educators, trainers, and facilitators in both the understanding and the providing of education for students and clients. Wouldn't this be groundbreaking? Wouldn't this be something that people go, my goodness, if I understood or could find out how to stimulate, stimulate my class, class I'm with there, and how to do this and say, hey, um, John, John, maybe if you were to study in this particular fashion, perhaps that would help. And they go and do it. And lo and behold, they start, they start coming back with good results. Perhaps there's uh, Mohammed over in the far side of the corner. And he, if he was to do a certain type of um, uh, approach to learning, it would help him. There could be um, a lady called Nadia. 
at the front of the class, a very young lady at the front of the class, and she has a certain type of type of learning, which is at her fingertips. And we're going to look at the various types of go through this. Interesting, isn't this such an interesting subject when we realize it's all there? It's all there. We just need to discover it and have those wow moments, those revealing moments that go, my goodness, at last, now I know. Hindu palmistry states that fingerprints are the karmic forces flowing through the body. When we used to talk about karma in the olden days, it was almost like, oh, don't talk about karma, it's a bad thing. Oh, it's, that, it's rubbish, isn't it? Um, I'm not saying karma is rubbish, it's our reaction to what karma is. It's if we work well towards something, we are creating a better karmic energy, or as we'd say in the Western world, a life space, a life. Isn't karma about life? If we're doing something to make our lives better, we are creating a great karma. You could use this to say you're great, you're creating a great karmic energy in your classroom because everybody is responding to you. Everybody's engaging. And isn't it interesting that, and this happened to me when I was at school, is that um, certain classes I was interested in, as I imagine a few of you would say the same, and certain classes I was not. And if the teacher wasn't engaging enough, that was it. That was it. I was not interested. If the teacher was engaging, it didn't matter what session, what class it was, what class it was at all. I would start to learn it. I think it's quite interesting because of the way they put it across and also by the way you like to learn and how people can understand this. Okay, right. Now let's go look at this. Wow, look at this fingerprint already. And uh, this is one of the fingerprints we saw slightly earlier on. And we're going to go and look at this and decipher what it's all about. Okay, types of fingerprints. Each fingerprint is unique with different types of fingerprints. Some prints on our fingers may be the same or similar, whilst other fingerprints show mixed patterns. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you got mixed patterns. That does not mean you've got a mixed up personality. It just means that each finger, which has a relationship to the way you respond to your life, responds in a certain way, has an energy that responds to. Um, for instance, Jupiter, our first finger, is response to the way we see our world and the way the world sees us. So this fingerprint is going to be important to our reflection, how we see the world. Uh, the little finger is Mercury. It's about our communication, how we think, how we learn, our intelligence and relationship to relationships and money and money. Okay, that's just little examples there, but we're going to look at this as a general term, and I hope you people enjoy this. Right. Um, right, here's a list of the main fingerprint patterns and how they may indicate our best learning style. The following some examples, these differences. The clearest method to view a fingerprint, <coughs> either with a magnifying glass or by using a washable ink substance to impress upon print paper. A lot of people do this. They, a lot of palmists insist on doing this. We're actually here, mobile phones, when I actually read for people's fingerprints, the cameras on those, they're up to about 12 megapixel now, uh, probably even more. Um, they're ample enough. Um, I don't think you'd see mine on here. You might do, might do even though I've got a high, um, high grade camera, but uh, unlike another one, I probably would. Okay, notice which is the common finger print type. Some hands may have the same shape prints, whilst others are mixed finger prints. In a mixed hands, look for the dominant pattern. Is there one, two, or three? Is I, for instance, are there, are there one dominant pattern? Maybe there's three fingers that have the same pattern. Maybe it's two, maybe it's whatever it is. But let's go and have a look at, uh, first of all, uh, some prints here. And uh, we'll go over this, but have a good little chat. And um, as I say, I won't go through all of it because I think this is worth probably a couple of sessions. And uh, then we can look at other areas in the hand coming over the coming weeks, how, which also may help our way to learning. Okay, ulnar loops, ulnar loops. Okay, the uh, palmistry really came out, came out of India, it's also came out of uh, Egypt, it's come out of many different places, but the origins are very difficult to try and find, but people think it's India. And uh, um, because a lot of people didn't write about it, 
one of the main reasons they didn't write about it because the people didn't know how to write in those days. Um, the, uh, the more symbols uh, we were able to relate to, and in fact, the hand is full of symbols, uh, full of patterns and symbols relate to the way we think and respond to our world. And uh, so um, it wasn't until later in the centuries that we actually became more open to the idea of uh, using hands, especially in England, it became exceptionally um, popular in the Victorian period, which was at the start of uh, the 20th century, even just before it. Um, it became more popular from about the 1970s onwards and is very much looked at uh, on a scientific level nowadays with a lot of scientists actually giving credible reports on, on the hand and how, it's, how it responds to, um, how we can assess character and their responses to life. Even to timing of events, that's also indicative. And, and that's interesting because um, just like, it seems like I'm reading an article this morning, is that a dog, the dog knows when uh, its owner is about to go into a fit. It knows just before, so the dog senses it and barks loudly for people to be alerted so they know how to help the child, which is the, the owner of the dog, um, to cope with the fits. So the dog is an emergency response, emergency response to uh, that particular family that there to help that child there. As much as we are with Parvis is that we often look at things and we are the emergency response in some respects to help us avoid um, difficulties, become aware of our nature, that the difficulties we could encounter. Um, as we say, um, they often say in life, isn't it? Prevention is better than cure. Uh, but to understand more so than that, though, to understand our characters and why sometimes things happen is very much about hand reading. Okay, this print is a loop where the open end of the loop is on the left hand side of the finger. So you'll notice then when you look at your fingers head on, you'll notice that loop there should come in and you'll notice it there. Um, it will have a the way it comes in on your fingers. Uh, is on the left hand side of the thing. When I say left hand side, you know it sweeps in on the left, comes up and goes back down again. But it almost comes across the hand, almost like a wave of some description, and then comes back. Okay, Your Highness, yes, you ask a question now. How can I help? I have a question, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Phil. Uh, how to recognize uh, everything? Because it's not easy. This, not is what you, this is why you need a magnifying glass or you need to uh, put the impression on washable ink and put it onto paper. Yeah, and um, uh, what, um, what else? Uh, how, uh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. That's all right. <laughs> no problem. Uh, yeah. I was traveling a lot this week. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no problem at all. I'm, I'm during two, three weeks. Okay. Um, Yes, so uh, Dr. Phil, so every every uh, finger has a specific print. In fact, your karma, uh, let's say that you said the, the little one is uh, your karma. And every- oh, No, 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 not the little one is our karma, no. No, um, it's our karma through our finger. Uh, our karma is often we say our, how we, um, it's Jupiter. So if we are d doing something in our lives here, which relates to um, is how people see us, our responses to life, our responsibilities through Saturn, which is a middle finger, is very much related to our karma. It's, it's also related to the planet Saturn, and it's also related to the hermit, and it's also, um, and you'll find other cultures have different things. But what we're looking at here, especially with the middle finger, if you notice here why it's karma is because we have two fingers on one side and a finger of thumb on the other. And this one is the backbone of our lives, the backbone. And how we, and this area of our hand here is how we handle discipline, responsibilities, how we handle being uh, grounded, how we form our own boundaries and how we, uh, how we can strengthen our lives. Karma is very much about this. If we're too soft and too nice, we're just gonna get walked over. If we're too strong, people are gonna not like us because we're too strict. And, but it's also what we do. And it, very much every finger in every hand 
every fingerprint, every hand will relate to how we learn and also how we are going to work with karma. Wow. Uh, and uh, Dr. Creed, one last question for you. Um, it means that um, we said that the, the left hand and the right hand are, the op are opposite to one another because we have the electric one and the magnetic one. So they are uh, the, uh, the, they are opposite and they are the reflection of one another. So um, can we say that um, uh, the left one, the fingers, the, print, the fingerprints are the reflection in the other side in a positive way? For example, let's say that, let's say that in my left hand, uh, I, it's all uh, uh, my karma, my thoughts, my education, all, all what I am finally, uh, but in a, in a, in a ne negative way, and my other hand will reveal the opposite or the reflection in the positive way. Very so interesting. In negative, You're... One in positive. I love these questions. I absolutely love these questions. These are brilliant. Thank you. Right. Okay. So sometimes we call this electric and magnetic. Sometimes we call this passive and active. Sometimes we call this the unconscious and the conscious, whichever way we'll do this here. The left hand, if you consider it like this, is what you're born with. How your mind is, is at the very start of your life here. Um, this is how it's mapped out in some respects, people could say, the way we think, the way we respond to our lives. This hand, the right hand, is how you use it. So you're right, in a sense here, if we look at the mind, there's two parts to the mind. When we look at the hands, there's a blueprint of the hands. It reflects the mind's thinking and it reflects the mind's energy. So we can have thoughts about things, but how you react to it is is the outcome to something. This is interesting. A lot of um, analysts in this, a lot of people do a lot of thinking in this, especially about how we react to life. It's, it's not the situations that are the problem in our lives. It's the way we react to them. That can either be the, be the beneficiary or the problem, whichever way we look at it. So this is, we understand here, when you look at the prince and left hand, this is the natural way of dealing with it. You may have conflict here, if you put it in the right hand, the symbols aren't the same. And there may be a little bit of like, hey, let's have a discussion. So would you understand here, naturally, you are a loop in your left hand and you like a certain way of learning. But actually, in this other hand here, you've, you've come across something else. Maybe you like doing things a different way. Is which way is best for you? Then we really get into nitty gritty. If we got into the nitty gritty, we would be here for hours, <laughs> hours to, to understand. And this is the uniqueness of uh, an individuality, which is why it's so important, I think, not to get caught up into belief systems that uh, herd us into one type of category. Um, because you say you like football, you are then a football fan or a football hooligan. No, doesn't mean that at all. You could be a football fan who um, promotes healthy living. It's, uh, it's, it's completely different. We, we often think here. I'm not saying that is a way to think, but people can think different things. Because you read a Russian newspaper, does that mean you're a communist? No, it doesn't. It just means you're interested just looking at what's going on in Russia. You could be a discoverer. It's interesting, isn't it? So just because one way is our individuality is away from stereotyping. Stereotyping, I think, is where we get caught up into the, into the masses, the masses rather than, the, rather than we're looking here at the individual. And if we can work with the individual and get individual groups to work together because they are reflective or respond or work with one another, you're in a great place of learning. Great place of uh, uh, connecting people. And this would be an interesting thing to do. I'd love to put this into practice. And uh, I do put this into practice with people when people come to me about uh, how are they going to learn for their exams and how are they going to pass them. And working with fingerprints is extraordinary. People actually go away going, I put this into practice and they do it and it works. Right. Wow. Okay. I would stay the whole day listening to you and learning from you. 
Wow. <laughs> well, so, I love, I, I enjoy learning and I enjoy different yeah. ways of learning. I enjoy finding and discovering ways in which we can learn to better ourselves. And uh, how did that get across there? I've got red lines. Wow, wow. I don't know who's doing the red lines. I've got red lines all over the place. Sorry, you said. Oh, that's Sarah. Sarah's writing. <laughs> I think it's Sarah. Sarah, as you do. I think you're writing all over my screen. I'm sorry. I was trying to zoom it to meet you. Hello. Lovely to meet I you, really Sarah. Nice to meet you, too. Yeah. You're I, writing I all over my Oh dear, oh dear! But I think it's so how, funny. How she can do that? It's your screen. I don't. Know. I don't know. I don't know. There, there is. Uh, uh, how she can write in your screen? It's not possible. Uh, I don't know how she can do that. But that's quite funny. Right? But, do you have any explanation to that? Uh, I, 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 don't, I can't understand that one. But let's have a look. Let's go to clear all. Hey, I've got rid of them. That's right. Okay. Right. Okay, unless it was something went wobbly on my screen, I don't know, but it's just, it just interesting. But it came up with Sarah's name underneath the writing, so I thought it was caught that way. Anyway, let's go and look. So individuals with the ulnar loops will enjoy classroom-type settings. Let's just go back to there. Um, right, sorry, sorry, beg your pardon. Uh, the print in the, uh, is a loop where the open end of the loop is on the left-hand side of the finger. Individuals with the ulnar loop often love to learn with others uh, either in a group or multi-person person setting, as this environment maintains their energy flow. They may feel energized when making social connections or friendships around them through learning. Individuals with older loops will enjoy classroom type settings and are often attracted to upbeat energy. The teacher may be best advised to coach or facilitate learning in an interesting environment where, pos where possible as this keeps the energy flow high. One downfall of studying in a group or classroom setting for the individual with the owner loop is they often get very gregarious, very lively. They may enjoy the fun aspect of gatherings a little too much. And so formal education setting may then become just a social environment. Now, we've seen this, haven't we, where we get a class together, but then they all start socialising. They all think it's hilarious. Well, unfortunately, this is where the on the loop type, it goes too far. We need, so the teacher here is to keep it into a, such an interesting um, way of learning that it really stimulates people. We stimulate, I want to learn this. This is good. This is so interesting. Maybe there's, uh, for this lot, they would enjoy quizzes or perhaps someone's going to get a prize or who's the best team? Who's uh, who's going to be the greatest? The older loops will just, uh, they will die for this. Die for this. My God, uh, learning how to do um, Lego is fantastic, <laughs> even though they're 16 years old. Okay, all right, fine, just... Time to do things here. And uh, how they learn to do um, gardening to um, people who are not interested in gardens whatsoever, like me. Um, they will suddenly become very interested in what this is all about. Um, so that's, that's that particular type there. Maintaining clear boundaries or definitions between learning and social environments is advised. Good likability and social skills when working with individuals with honor loops help to make educational sessions as fun and engaging as possible. So there you can see one of the honor loops, as you can see there by the print, it comes up, goes over the top, comes back down and goes at this side. And that's where it opens there on the left side. So it comes up over the top and comes back down. So that's we go there. Now, we'll go and look at something else, something else here. In fact, uh, this is called the radial loop. The radial loop is similar to the ulnar loop, and the only difference between the loop is the radial loop has a reverse loop with the open end on the right side of the finger, not the left. Individuals with the radial loop patterns may have blocks to learning as they can often be reliant on other people for information instead of researching for themselves. So for example here, these people sometimes feel that in peer groups, they are not so good. They don't feel it. They feel a bit overwhelmed, intimidated sometimes. 
um, how they're going to learn is going to be very difficult for these people. And it's literally by identifying that the loop is reversed, not the ulnar loop, a radial loop. They often find group or large social settings overwhelming and unsettling, which could lead to confidence issues, and they may have a tendency to focus or direct attention onto everyone else and deflect action away from themselves. We, How many times have we seen this by people in our lives here? By whether it's a classroom, whether it's peer groups, whether it's a group, fun settings, social groups, that you find these people who focus on everyone else, but not themselves. And it's interesting because then this person here, we've got a bit of an identity issue going on here. What is it that's going on? Why is this person doing this? Why are they focusing on other people and looking for them for help rather than finding it themselves? Individuals with radial loops should be encouraged to build up and improve their own self-confidence and self-worth issues. My goodness, it's interesting, isn't it? It's about our self-worth. Why are we feeling like this? It could be just a pattern because they don't like large groups such as classrooms. They'd rather be somewhere else, maybe one or two people learning together in a fashion like this. Maybe it's good with other loops or other stuff. In fact, not even um, older loops, but it could be a it could be a different type of person to um, one of the other patterns to help the radial loop to become a um, stronger. Yes, your highness. Another question. Uh, yes, I have. I have a question for you, Doctor Phil. Uh, if our our confidence, self confidence, and all that is already trained in our fingers, so uh, how it is working? In fact, when we are making some evolution, so um, the I mean, uh, it will also change, and we are not aware that our print fingers are changing. This is not uh, possible, I think. Or is it reported in our next karma? <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's something interesting it, yes very very interesting question when we come across radial loop patterns they often will focus on something else they'll go to something else to latch upon that energy what we've got to do to those people is say to ah, 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 come on let's bring it back to you let's go and build the confidence in yourself it's almost as though here for example we latch on to we latch on to things in our lives and detach away from ourselves. For example, the people who like to help others, they often will do everything for everybody else. For instance, they work in an environment or they learn or they're in a group and they immediately want to help people. But then when it comes to helping themselves, they can sometimes feel uncomfortable about it. Like, I feel I'm being really self-centered. I feel that I'm vain. Is there something wrong? No, they're habits they've been used to because they always help everyone else. In fact, when they stop helping everyone else, the people they used to help saying, why have you stopped helping me? Why have you stopped this? And when they focus on themselves, they think, oh, look at him now, he stopped helping us. Look, he's helping themselves. The real, the real valuers of people, the real um, people of understanding and growth would say here, good. This is about time. You need to look after yourself. These groups are encouraged to look after themselves. If we then look after ourselves, then things change. And this is what it comes into in just a second, that uh, individuals with radio loops should be encouraged to build up and improve their own self-confidence, self-worth, because here's something coming up. A challenge for these individuals is not to feel so overwhelmed and pressured by how quickly others are grasping concepts and learning. Because sometimes we may have a slower way of learning. Sometimes radial loops do, they're not as quick, they're as quick as others. Sometimes it takes time, which is why they latch onto others. Oh my God, I feel so dumb. Why are they, why are they learning the, the five times table quicker than me? And I, I, I go up to five and I can't get to six. Well, they just have to be encouraged to learn their way. Sometimes what well, a greater thing is with radial loops is once they've learned it, it stays. With other people, they learn it and it disappears. <laughs> yes. A challenge, yes. Um, a challenge for these individuals not to feel so overwhelmed, sorry, encourage students not to measure their skill sets against others and to understand the importance of learning at their own pace. 
The good news is that individuals with the radial loop are, are often very responsive to positive reinforcements. They need this. Somewhere in their lives, they don't look for it. In fact, they hide. They don't sometimes hear when someone comes, they're expecting someone to say to them, oh, you're last again, or oh, you're not doing this right. So almost expecting something perhaps negative. But to reinforce them, oh, it's like water to a dry pond. It's like um, rain to a desert. It really is. The good, yes, it's often they, they need positive reinforcement. This lifts them up because they don't like the large groups. They tend to shrink into the corner. They often have a very caring and nurturing nature and responding to these traits often helps them to build greater self-belief and confidence. Like we said here, these people always want to focus and care about other people rather than actually caring themselves. Isn't it interesting? We see these people caring for people, they help them. Those people then go off and become super successful whilst they are still at the same place because all they're doing is looking after others. Once though you've captured their attention, you can inspire them to amaze everyone with their abilities. You can, you can amaze them. And isn't it lovely to see someone who's always looking after everyone else and they look like they're enjoying it when really they feel it's just their comfort zone. And for these guys, it's really needed at times to change the way we learn and to adapt. And this is the thing about our lives here. We can always adapt something because when you give them, you boost them with confidence. They soar like an eagle, like a beautiful hot air balloon. This is about self-belief somewhere that maybe through, if you want to look at it as past life, if you're open to that, it could be, struggles there could be something to do with the the dna that they were born into a family of conflict or something like this or always felt that um other people were were taking away the limelight from them it's just the way we are at times sometimes it's just a natural way we are we respond literally by looking after others and what a great profession for these people to go into such as the caring profession, the health profession, the supporting profession, the service industries to help other people. But it's important they reinforce this themselves. Then they grow, then they get it. And then these people soar to the greater heights. And although they're helping people, it's a lovely thing that people then admire them. They really do, they admire them. So I think some of the traits we often see through learning is and how much information is in our fingertips is incredible. And we're coming up to quarter two. So I'm just going to finish on this one. Um, so unfortunately, I've got to go at quarter two. But uh, um, I just want to say that we'll go over this again next week. I'll have more time next week to be able to go over this for, uh, for the hour. I will just quickly go over these two, which I did last week, and then move on to others. But it's a subject that could go on for hours and hours, and it's a, it's a beautiful one. I love this. And I think here, when we understand our own uniqueness, our own individuality, we just become full of uh, self-respect, um, dignity, um, we're self-love. So love the things we love to do in our lives. And rather than always thinking about other people, um, being distracted by others, uh, such as the other loop people, the, the owner loop, and uh, how we can make our lives even better. So this is just, uh, the guys, those who are just joining us, this is just about learning through our fingertips. It's, it's all about how the different fingerprint types relate to learning and the different classroom settings they want and how we can learn. You'll notice through the other ones we work through next week that, uh, that you'll sometimes amaze you when you see this. You'll just go, wow, that is me. That is so me and the way we can do it. It's interesting. So though the you got that we've done it on the loops, which love the social type, social type settings, they want the classroom, they want a lively, interesting teacher. We've got the radial loops that want to um, please everybody else. They don't always want to take things themselves. And then we're going to go on to the other groups next week. And uh, so it's interesting. A teacher 
If a teacher was to look at the fingerprints and relate this and understand how we learn, then what a great classroom. What a great classroom. The teacher's going to feel like, wow, what a connection he can have with his learners relating to every single one with a different learning style. And the classroom are all going to get it. Have a lovely, have a lovely week, folks. Have a lovely week. And I will connect with you next week. I'm sorry I've got to do a short one on this, but unfortunately I've got a problem with my car and I've got to go and sort it out. And the only time I can set fit it in is 12 noon. But uh, yes. It's been lovely. Thank well, you very much. Dr. Phil, I, I just love your course. I, I would love to, to learn more and more about these um, fingerprints, you know, and I hope that next week and probably during two or three weeks to, to just teach us how to interpret every line, how we can recognize all that, what is, yes. you know, yes. all that. So if you can spend some time uh, in, uh, in teaching us uh, the fingerprints, it would be just amazing. Because I believe that everything is in it. Your present life, your past, your future, your karma, everything is in it. So to know yes. yourself, if you can't, if you are not spiritual, let's say if you are not spiritual and you cannot overcome or reach this level of understanding who you are, at least you can analyze the physical thing. Yes, you know? absolutely, absolutely. And as we say, we we have a hands-on way of learning or uh, grasp this. It's, it's interesting how we look at our hands and the, the terminology we, we learn. How are you going to grasp this knowledge? What's the hands-on, let's get hands-on to something and uh, let's point the way of learning how we and, can give a thumbs up to something. I have just one stupid question, you know. It's a stupid question. It's never stupid. Never <laughs> stupid. No but, such thing as a stupid question. How, how we learn that? So how do we know that this line, this finger, how do we really know? Um, analyze the situation. I mean, the people who found this, uh, this secret that everything is here and this finger represents your confidence, this finger is represents your karma, the other one, etc. So how do we know exactly? Is it by experience and they were analyzing that? I, I thought yes. Was yes, I, I think it is by experience analyzing people's behaviors. When I look at my behavior, to learning i definitely relate to the way i do my fingerprints my wife definitely she's got a way of learning a great learning style um i notice others when i'm actually um, in consultation sessions with people and i look at their prints and i tell them what their character style is like through their prints they're literally wow yes you just know that through my fingerprints yes it's yes. There. yes i know uh, after that i i, I will <laughs> release you for sure you know why I'm asking? I was asking this stupid question, Dr. Phil, because your DNA is unique. Your fingerprint is unique. How do they know? Even by experience, your fingerprint will never be the same than the other. So no one can really interpret That's right. your fingerprint. <laughs> this is why I, I ask these stupid questions, because if the DNA is unique your fingerprint is unique yes um, how you can say that what is happening for you is obvious for me and will happen also for me will be also okay for me this is why i asked i said it's a stupid question it's the mirror isn't it how we look at the mirror and how we see ourselves is how we reflect to the outside world if we have a positivity and we discover a mindset to learning in a different character or in a different style, then that's the way to do it. Um, very quickly, my brother, my, uh, myself when I was learning, I used to like uh, piano music and meditation music in the background, just as something to help me learn and to keep something flowing in the background. My brother liked rock and roll music, blasting through his headphones and he got degrees. I couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> I'm still trying to this day. Anyway, I'm going to go, folks. Take care. Have a lovely day. And yes, thank you very, very much. God bless Have to you. Have a wonderful week. And, and we'll you too.
Yes, and we meet next week. Same okay, time. take care. Bye-bye. Love you, Dr. Phil. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. All of you being Bye -bye. here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.